says all of us is going to go through trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the devil. Now this word devour here, Satan is out to destroy you. He's not out to hurt you. He's not out to discourage you. He wants to kill you. He wants to do away with you right now. If he had his way, he would do away with you. The devil's ultimate agenda is to destroy us, not merely to hurt, maim, or discourage, but to devour and destroy us. Now I'm going to try to stay at my notes because if I get off my notes, I get away from them. So you see me read, these are things that the Holy Spirit has put down for me to read right here. He knows, he, he patrols the earth as a commander of the host of evil spirits, through whom he enslaves and keeps captives those who do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 says, He's the prince of the power of the air. Now you get a hold of that, and the revelation, the Holy Spirit gives you revelation that you see what's happening in our world today, the prince of power of the air today. If only the young believers understood today what that scripture means right there, they'd have a different thought about Jesus Christ. Now, he walks about. I was thinking about it as I was reading Job this week. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? You know, church, Satan cannot do nothing unless God permits him to. He's under God's, he's under God's hand. He has to come forth and he has to be accountable to God wherever he does and where he to goes in this earth. He's not all my present, what like God is. He has to walk around through the earth. And he looks to see who he can devour, who he can attempt, and who he can try to destroy. And as Satan says, God says here, then Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth, walking up and down in it. Now he's looking, each one of you, each one of us, including me, he's looking at a way to get in. Now to paraphrase it, God says, have you considered my servant Job? Boy, how would you like to say, God say to Satan, have you considered my servant Jerry, or Karen? You know, that'd be a frightening thing, it seems like, you know. But God knew where Job stood at, you know it. And Satan says, I can't touch him. There's a hedge around him. You've got a hedge. Our hedge is the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, that's how we overcome the devil today. The blood is powerful. Get a revelation of that. For without the blood, there's no remission of sins. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us and protect us today. Years ago, God has shown me in Exodus chapter 12, to help me in my life. God, Moses, <laughs> told the children of Israel, you take the lamb, a lamb. Take it that night and roast it, cut it up and eat it, and take the blood and put it over the doorpost. Everyone who was in there, when that death angel came through, he says, I cannot, I will pass over that house. I cannot touch no one in that house. It, it could even have been an unbeliever at that time, because it was a mixed multitude that came up with Moses. And all of you are under the blood of Jesus Christ today. You put your faith and your trust in that today. He's going to worship your sins away. Satan can't touch you there. You'll have to leave you alone. That blood is our protection right there. And, uh, and I was going through this, Luke in uh, Isaiah chapter 14, 12. And I'm, what I'm talking about here this morning is showing you this morning how you have power over the devil. Amen. You've got power over him. A lot of Christians don't understand that today, you know. They're always saying, well, the devil's doing this to me. He's got me doing this. He tempts me this and here. They're glorifying the devil. I'm bringing up his name a lot, though, but Jesus Christ is the one we look on to today. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Now, how art thou fallen from heaven? This is where Satan had come, and he was an angel at that time, angel of light. He was in charge of God's choir, they believe. It says, O Lucifer, or son of the morning, no, art thou cut down to the ground which did weep the nations. Now, there are some words in there. That word cut is a powerful word in Hebrew. That word means to be cast. God had cast him out of heaven. Jesus said here, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning had fallen from heaven. Only in the Old Testament, nowhere else in the New Testament, 
is Satan able to approach God's throne? That's the only time it's recorded in the Bible is in the Old Testament. You don't see it in the New Testament. Jesus had the revelation as he saw this when Satan was cast out of heaven. Now that word cast, as I was looking through that, Satan fell like lightning from heaven. His judgment in heaven was swift and obvious. There was such a force when he hit God, God hit him and knocked him down. You see what lightning does today? How fast it hits the earth? That's how fast Satan flew back to the earth when he hit God's throne. How could anybody think, and Lucifer, I thought to myself, knowing that God created him, created him, known that he was going to try to overthrow God because says, I want to be like the Most High. I mean, uh, sometimes you think the gall that had right there, thinking he could do that, but he had no win at all. And that shows you the power of our Heavenly Father today. That was a powerful revelation there. When the disciples went out, and when they were preaching the gospel, they came back to Jesus and said, we've cast out demons, healed the sick. And Jesus said, don't rejoice over that. But you rejoice in it because your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what you rejoice in today. My name is in there. The day I accepted Jesus Christ, God took a pen and put down William Edward Cox accepted Jesus Christ in February 1971. And my name's there in the Book of Life. That's why I rejoice in today. But God has given us the power to overcome the devil every day of our life today. As we pray for our families, pray for our wives and our husbands today. Now, Satan walks about in the earth again. Job, in John chapter 10, 10, the enemy's job is, is come to steal, kill, and to destroy. I tell you, our pastor and his family is under attack. I'll put it that way. Satan is out to destroy if he can stop this pastor from moving this church forward into this community, going to a new building. Who knows what's planned for the future of this church today? Until God gets him back into the pulpit, he's going through a trial now. He's going through a Job trial, and God's going to bring him out in the end. More blessings then than he has now. I believe with all my heart. Just like today, God is tacked, and Satan's tacked into the sun. Going to the hospital today, his family. If he can't get the pastor, he's going to hit the family. If Satan can't get to you, he's going to hit your kids, wife, anybody. To get you distracted from moving forward in Jesus Christ. We press in, church, we press in. In this world, we're going to have tribulation today. And I'm going to share a story later on here about me, what happened when I was first saved. James chapter 4, verse 7. I think I got that on here, yes. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and flee from you. This is a scripture that will give you the power to overcome Satan in your life every day right here. Submit is obedience to Jesus Christ. Submit. When I got saved, I was at Lordstown. I got saved on the line, 1971. My testimony, you've heard some of it. I was bound by alcohol, bound by pornography. Alcohol brings a lot of sins into your life. I don't glorify it, but what I'm going to share, God had saved me on the line. I accepted Jesus Christ. I went to the church, went to the altar. I just didn't seem like to get through. One day at Lord's Town on the line, I said, Jesus, forgive me my sins. When Christ forgave me, thousands and thousands of pounds went off of me. And then the enemy hit me with full blast. I was, it took me down on my knees right on the line I was working. I was right on my knees. And this is a scripture God gave me. I've used it all these years. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil will flee from you. You resist him in the faith. Resist today. That word resist is to withstand or stand against something. And I stood against Satan. I says, leave me alone in the name of Jesus Christ. From my day on, God has always given me the scripture if I go through a battle, through a trial of some kind. Now, in Matthew, what did Jesus use when he was in the mount? Because there was one way he battled Satan. He used the word of God. It is written, it is written, it is written. He said three times in the mount. Know God's word. Uh, church, know it. Know it. Well, I'm going to share with you here in a little bit here. Now, this scripture right here, this is a powerful one right here. I just got done reading, and I'm going through it again on uh, the return of the gods by Jonathan Hahn. And I'm not going to 
teach and preach what I, he has right there. But God has given me this years ago, this scripture right here, to help me in my walk with Jesus. It says, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house, from whence I came out, and when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Now, Jesus is talking about a man right here who was an unbeliever. He had a darkened spirit. He had no desire whatsoever for Jesus Christ. Then Jesus came and he cast that spirit, that spirit of darkness, away from him. Now, here's the vacuum. This house is empty now. Born again, accepted Jesus Christ. You did the same thing. You accepted Jesus Christ. I'm going to give you this morning a test here this morning. Raise your hand, and I'm in this test as well. I'm in it too. Don't be afraid. Before you accepted Jesus Christ, before you did, gave your heart to the Lord, did you pray every day? You prayed every day to Jesus? Every day. If you did, raise your hand. If you did, every day. Every day. You got one, Jerry did. Second one is here. Before he accepted Jesus Christ, how many of us praised God every day? The morning soon you got up during the day, you praised the Lord and said, Father, I give you all the praise. I'm thankful to you, and I give you all praise and glory for everything. Every day. My only praise I gave to the Lord was taking his name in vain. That was the praise, you know, right there. Before I was born again Christian. Before he was born again. How many of you got up in the morning through the daytime and read your Bible? Before you accepted Jesus Christ now. How many? Before you were saved, come to church or mail your church or mail your tithes into the church to the Lord. So far ain't got nobody. <laughs> Jerry the only one so far. On one. one of them. Last one? Before you were saved. Gave your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. How many make sure you go to church every Sunday, you attend the service at least once or twice a week before you're born again? Now the day you were saved and you accepted Jesus Christ in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 says, you was delivered from the power of darkness, you was transferred into the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ. Now you were pulled out of darkness. Now you're in light now. You give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's a vacuum there. All that old stuff's gone. When I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, that day I was delivered from alcohol, pornography, a whole bunch of other garbage, gambling, and junk that's been in my life. I was saved two weeks. No, two months it was. And my wife's right here, she'll verify. I was in our house in Seabury, Ohio. I was in the room, the bedroom. I was sitting on the bed. I literally felt that demon come through the wall of that house. And I hollered my wife sitting beside me, and I cried. I said, Lord, honey, pray that demon gets out. That demon was coming back. My house was empty. It was empty. I gave my heart to the Lord. I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's coming back. That spirit's coming back to see what I'm going to do. Literally, that spirit came from the wall. It was a, I couldn't see it, but the, just the feeling of it, the fear and the power of that demon came through. And my wife prayed in the name of Jesus Christ, and that demon went right out the wall. Amen. Right out the wall. Now, I want to give you two examples. Afghanistan, 12 years ago, we went in Afghanistan. We took our military in there. We set the Afghan people free, the cities. We, uh, the women were allowed to go back to work. The women were allowed to walk the streets. Girls were allowed to go to school. They were in the government, the women were. They had freedom. People had freedom to walk around. Why? Because our military was there. Liberated them, set them free. A year ago, or a year ago, what happened? Our president pulled our troops out of Afghanistan. The generals had told him, says, leave 2,500 people back in Afghanistan. Leave them there. He wouldn't listen to them. 
As soon as we pull it out, you see the airplane, the jet take them off, the last of them going out, what happened? As soon as they went out, the Tabaland and the El County Acaio came back in, and it's worse now than it was before we went in that dance. And now the girls are pulled out of school, not allowed to go to school, they're not allowed to be in government, they're in suppression, they're killing everybody who has something to do with the military of the United States. That was a vacuum, we opened it up, we opened that vacuum up. We should have kept some troops there to keep peace and order. Another example is our schools. How many in here, 1957, I was in sixth grade, my teacher had a Bible up on her desk. We said the Lord's Prayer. She read out of the scriptures. 1957, I was sixth grade. How many in here can remember that you say the Lord's Prayer and your teachers read the scriptures in school? How many of you don't? Read the scriptures. 1962, they took the Bible out of school, they took prayer out of school, they took the Ten Commandments out of school. Now we have a vacuum. What happened? Now we've got coming in there today, the discipline of our children, the murders in our school, transgender now teaching our young kids. Teaching our young kids, whether a girl, if you're a girl, they're telling you you're a boy, or if you're a boy, they're telling you you're a girl now. And they're doing these uh, sex operations on them right now in this country. I've just been studying on that, and it is happening in London and England, and it's happening in the United States, whether you know it or not. Where is, where is the enemy? He tries to kill our kids. Go back to Moses. Get away with all the children. Kill them all. Herod, kill all the kids when Jesus was a baby. What's he trying to do today? Kill our children, abortions today, and even in our public schools from kindergarten up now, teaching them today that they are not all this junk in here, the sex education. There's no kindergartners need to know about sex and stuff, you know. I mean, you start getting your teens, that's a different story. You start talking to your kids. That's up to the parents, you know, not the schools today, telling your kids what to do, you know. That's what's happening today. Our children destroying our kids today. And now we left a vacuum in our schools today. And that's why we're suffering today in our schools today. Now. Matthew 4, then he goeth and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first state, even so it shall be also in this wicked generation. Now, folks, we're in that generation today. Yeah. We are today. Yeah. We're paying a price for it today. I'm just going to say it just like it is. Hey, this lesbian homosexuality stuff today, it's bad. Now, I'm going to show I watched the news the other night. I'm just going to say it like it is. So, how many saw Friday night, Washington, D.C. had a big convention there, a big party, and they showed Joe Biden there, and they showed the one who was in uh, transportation, I forget his name, ran for president, gay one. Showed him on TV, with his boyfriend or husband or whatever they call it. They made sure they showed them too, them too on TV, to promote what's happening to America today. For the average church member and the average person today, they won't see that garbage. And that's what we have today in Washington DC. Now I got about five to 10 minutes here, I'm gonna finish here. First thing, we're not saved by works today. Ephesians says, and uh, James, uh, I want to read that, get that in my Bible here, my new Bible. I'm going to read James chapter uh, 2, verse 17, a few verses. Even so faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils, devils also believe in tremble. But church, understand that. Satan trembles at Jesus Christ. Amen. He trembles at the child of God that prays and seeks God as a witness. He trembles at you. I'll try to destroy you. Thou believest. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You see then how that by works a man is justified, not by faith only. 
Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messenger and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead and faith without works is dead also. You're going, you just can't stay empty when you accept Jesus Christ. Ours works. What are the works? You're not saved by works, just like uh, Ephesians 2. For by grace, you are saved through faith. You're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Not works. You can't work your way to heaven, like Luther tried to do, if you stand by this life. And not of yourselves, it is the gift, of, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't work yourself in the way to heaven. But now you're empty, and you're going to have to fill your life with something. And I just gave you five things right there to fill yourself with every day, every day of your life. The first one is prayer. Before you were saved, then did you pray? First Thessalonians 5, 17 says, pray without ceasing. Luke 18, 1, pray always. Always men ought to pray. I like Daniel or Ephesians. And be Here, what are you going to be filled with? It says, be not drunk of wine or of success, but be filled with the spirit. There's two spirits in the world. John, 1 John talks about the spirit of error and the spirit of truth. Which spirit do you want to be filled with? Error is Satan. Truth is Jesus Christ. Well, you want to be filled with the spirit. It's Jesus Christ. That's the spirit of truth. Now, prayer. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened his chamber toward Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. Practice. He did it all the time. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and make a supplication before his God. Then the children of Israel, they prayed in the morning, they prayed in the evening sacrifice. They prayed twice. Daniel says, I'm going to fix you. I'm going to pray three times a day. I'm going to pray morning, afternoon, and the evening. He says, you're going to do that? I'll pray three times instead of two times. So every day, Daniel prayed. Every day. Now, and... Uh, Second one, seven times a day do I praise thee because of righteous judgments. Set a pattern every day to pray, church. Every day, morning, afternoon, you've got, you got to pray. Fill that with prayer because you're empty there. Fill with prayer every day. The second one right here is praise God. In uh, Psalms 34, 1, praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Psalms 119, 164, it says right here, Ezra, who wrote the book of uh, Ezra, wrote Psalms 119. He prayed, praise God seven times a day. Now, if I was asked a question today, how many times a day do you praise God? You know, don't want to put your hands up there. But, uh, praise God every day. Be thankful unto the Lord. Praise continuously. Now you're praising God. Now I'm not taking God's name in vain. Now I'm praising the Lord, thanking God for saving me and saving my soul and helping me every day of my life, you know. Praise God. Seven times a day. Hebrews 13, 15. Continuously offer the sacrifices of God. When you don't feel like praising God, when you get up and don't feel like it, fall on your knees and praise God. Amen. When you don't feel like praising God, praise Him. Praise Him anyway. But God is something going to help you in that right there. Praise is for you. <coughs> when you praise God, give him all the glory for everything. The second one right here, Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein a day in and day out at night. Read the word of God every day. Set a pattern every day to read God's word and put it in your heart. 51 years, God has shown me. Stay in his word. Stay in his word. I've gone through trials and tribulations too, and there's times when I was sick, I couldn't read the Word of God, wasn't able to, and I know Pastor has gone through that right now as well, I know he has, but keep him in prayer, and scriptures will come to his mind as he can quote the scriptures to himself as well. But read God's Word, set a pattern there. How many in that book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 10 and 11? The Bereans, they searched the scriptures every day, every day. Timothy, 2 Timothy. 115, study God's word every day. Proverbs 8, 34, watching daily at my gates, 
It's a day on your watch. That's three things right there. Before you were saved, did you again pay your tithes? Well, a man robbed God, yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have you robbed thee? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Go on here. But, I got to turn on reading it this way. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will refute the devourer. I will refute the destroyer. I know people today are born again Christians, they will not pay tithes, and they live in poverty. Won't work. You gotta pay your tithes. You don't pay it because you're gonna get more money back. Just thank God the peace you have every day. The peace you have in your, in your heart and in your mind every day. That's a blessing there. For your sake. It's for your sake. God will rebuke you for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, says the Lord of hosts. Pay your tithes. Pay your offerings to the Lord God. Church has got to keep going, even though the pastor's not here today. I just wonder how many has banked up their tithes. One time I was going through a church and had, was going through a church battle problem years ago. I had a guy call me on the phone. He said, Bill, back, take the tithes and hold them back. We want to get rid of the pastor. I said, no. I said, I will pay my tithes. I don't pay my tithes to my pastor. I give my tithes to God. They're his tithes to do what to do with the church today. God, be obedient in your tithes. And the last one is here. I think that was it. The last one is, before you were saved, did you go to church? Hebrews chapter 10, 24, verse 25, it says, Not forsaking the seminar ourselves together, consider one another, that means to attend and to care for one another spiritually. I see you. You encourage my heart when I see you this morning to come to church because you are faithful to the house of God. It doesn't matter who's standing up here, I'm saying. Pastor knows who he wants up here, who he don't. But whoever's up here minister, you, you don't come to church for me. You don't come to church for Pastor. You come because you love Jesus Christ. Because yeah. God says for sake. What would happen if Pastor, some chance if he's not here, what are we going to do? Where are you going to go? Are you going to forsake the church? You know, we encourage one another today. Be faithful in your attendance today. Now, I ain't going to say any more about that because I get in trouble. <laughs> so thank God. Thank God today, you know. Thank God. This faithful crew. I, I look out. I'm up here. I see it, you know. But thank God today. As we keep the church going and functioning and pray for John, and I, I think. Uh, Somebody else is speaking next week. And just whoever speaks, you know, like I say, pastor's here. He knows who's here, so be faithful to that speaker. Thank God for Jim. I learned a lot from Jim. He's on Wednesdays that time. Jim's a good Bible teacher. You don't have nothing to do on Wednesday afternoons. There's nothing to do on Wednesday nights. Where's everybody go to Wednesday nights? Come to church Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> so fill the place up. Thank God. Amen. That's we're going to close the word of prayer.